Hi guys, we've got a K-Series N80 Hilux here that come in for a dyno and a couple of other mods. The results were not great straight off the bat and I knew there was a bit of an issue so I popped the airflow meter out only to find out there's no air straighteners and I thought I'd show guys that are engineering and whatnot or doing a bit of four wheel drive fabrication some of the things you've got to consider. I know when we manufacture an air box for a vehicle I get a base run on the dyno and we also generally log the airflow meter and then we will 3D print the components and test it before we go and fabricate the whole thing to make sure that it's in Kui because sometimes if you're going from a panel to a pod or whatnot and the location even how close the bends are like we even had a silicon joiner um, changed in length by 20 mil and it started maxing out an airflow meter because of the proximity to a bend and that was a Friday night thing so it was never fun. So this particular air box is a few things and this isn't any way directed at whoever makes them or whatnot it's just showing you a few things you want to keep an eye out for this has no air straighteners now not only that but the pipe diameter is crucial if you change this diameter by five mil and it's bigger the speed over the airflow meter is far slower you're going to end up with a laggy vehicle that's going to make less power be less drivable and whatnot so this is just a 3d printed version of one of the units that we had during the r&d stages and you can see that these podiums are raised to support the airflow meter there's air straighteners that are not straight you can see they're actually tapered and that adjusts the airspeed over the airflow meter so all your fueling and whatnot is based off that um, not the whole strategy but some of it um, you'll see this one has no air straighteners there's no podiums for the airflow meter and it's been ground out here um, because the radius was too tight it was restricting the actual inlet pipe by about 50 percent now a couple of other things obviously is this has been I would say cut out by hand and you can see the proximity of the threads and how thin this element aluminium is. Uh, we run around 8 mil here and um, also it didn't have a gasket it just had um, double sided tape which all ripped off when we went to pull the air filter out. So um, the only other thing I cited was that there's no real rubber insulation bosses so it's going to be more prone to cracking and whatnot um, from the vibrations. The one that we manufacture for this particular vehicle there's quite a few things we do we have speed flow water drain bungs um, Everything's laser cut. It's got a rubber gasket, which is all made here in Taranaki. The airflow meter is five axis machine billet, and all the clamps that we use are worth from Germany. So, although this one may be a little bit cheaper, we have done the R&D and spent a significant amount of money. Like even just this billet airflow meter boss is a massive cost. However, to get a unit that you can fit in a stock vehicle and not sacrifice performance and economy and drivability. Um, um, that is one of the things that we have done. So I'll show you our one fitted out in the engine bay and then I'll show you the dyno results between this and our one. And it doesn't show everything the dyno. We did three runs off each and took an average. It's not a biased test. We didn't put it loose with our product on the dyno to make something read higher or whatnot, which we see all too often. Um, it's just giving you food for thought when it comes to purchasing an airbox and whatnot. So this other airbox actually had this bend twisted directly at it and it was actually squashed right down to about an inch and a quarter in the bend and um, obviously without having these podiums to support the airflow meter and how it was flexed up it had actually cracked and broken off a section of the plastic and I'm unsure where that had gone but anyway um, it's now got a proper billet boss um, that it sits in quite nicely. I did notice this especially with when we were doing the 300 series airflow meter de development is if the air speed's a little bit low and then it kind of slowly builds it into the fuel and you get like a real ramp style fuel delivery so you'll see here at 1900 rpm it had about 330 newton meters and with the correct airflow meter it had about 380 odd kind of thing so we've sacrificed about five, about 50 newton meters at 1900 rpm um, there is a slight crossover here but then in the peak end here you can see the green is with the other air box and obviously the total power wise we've gone from 153 to 162 so he'd lost 9 horsepower and torque wise it was 407 newton meters and 
now it's making 430 at peak torque. So he'd probably lost 20, 25 newton meters and close to 10 horsepower. Um, however, the drivability off the bottom end is what he's gonna notice the most of, um, just as there's a lack of airspeed over that sensor. And um, yeah, which would have a major effect on drivability, fuel economy, and obviously power output as well. So um, that's obviously one of the things that we do when it comes to R&D on products like this.